powerful a place that it is on the lower third of the body. So, that's where we work. That's where everything on that last slide happens. Now, the next thing. We've all seen this equation. We've memorized it for tests. It is energy equals the mass times the speed of light times the speed of light. Not relevant on a day-to-day -day basis for our dentistry, but yet there's a concept in this equation that is very practical for us. And it's the fundamental relationship between mass and energy. So all mass has energy and all energy has mass. They're interchangeable. Now, we, in dentistry, we don't see this much. We don't have instruments that can detect this much. But in medicine, they've done this for years. Um, yeah, they, CAT scans, MRIs, electromyograms, electrocardiograms, electroencephalograms, ultrasounds. These are all energy detecting devices that show us the health of, this, of the body and the systems. Now, what's, what, what follows right now may sound a, a bit strange to you, and I point this out so you don't think I don't know. So there's anatomic and there's non-anatomic energy pathways in the body. The anatomic pathways for energy in the body is the central nervous system. It's got the brain, the spinal cord, all the peripheral nervous systems. The non-anatomic energies in the, in the body are the uh, acupunctural meridians, and there's 12 of them. They keep the body in balance, and Eastern medicine for 3,500 years has known this. They balance the body back with nutrients, exercise, peacefulness of mind. In Western medicine, it's uh, take two of these, call me in the morning kind of thing. It's adding drugs back to the body to create health. But I don't have any Prozac deficient patients in my practice. And I don't think you do either. So in the Eastern world, it's all about being healthy and being in balance. There is a uh, special sense that the body has called proprioception. And it's an unconscious perception of the movement that we have in spatial orientations inside the body. It arises from stimulus inside the body and basically concerns a feedback loop so we perceive our positions in three-dimensional space. It really means that we've got a built-in neurological computer that guides us through the physical world. And it may be too, uh, too, that may be too technical all the way around, but I, I want to show you in a little different way also. The American Indians have a, a saying that no tree has branches so foolish as to fight with each other. Those, that's the chart of the acupuncture meridians. Now, when you look at a tree, luckily it's in the wintertime, all the leaves are down. But in that tree, no branches touch each other. So how do they know where they are in three-dimensional space? How does the tree know not to bump up against itself? Does it have little scout cells that get up there and find out empty spaces to grow into? Um, we can't dissect this tree and find out any anatomic pathways that, that will tell us why a tree grows without the branches touching itself. Not only that, they don't touch the branches of a different species growing next to them. And if you just think about all those trees out there, unless one has fallen over from a, from a, a, a storm or something, none of the branches are going to touch each other from different species. There's some spatial relationship that they know to grow into. Now, the biology majors, the vascular plant majors, and we can't cut these trees open and find this, this pathway. It's, it's non-anatomic. There's some other sense that growing things have to know where they're supposed to be. Everything in the, in the, in the world is, is in balance like this. There's up and down. There's ignorance. There's knowledge. There's love. There's hate. Uh, there is no front without a back. Everything is in balance. And the meridians are the things that balance our bodies energetically, and there's 12 of them. So, if there is an imbalance in the meridians, if there's an imbalance in the meridians, if there is an interference, if there's a blockage in the meridians, in the Eastern world they know that that is going to compromise health. 
So, oh, and by the way, in acupuncture, in ancient times, acupuncture uh, of the 388 sites on the bodies that acupuncturists can use, 26 of them were used for toothache. So it's one of the most ancient forms of dentistry and oral surgery known in existence as acupuncture. In more recent times, in 1950, uh, Dr. Reinhold Wall, German physician, started studying how the acupuncture points and the meridians uh, uh, to chart the body and to see how it re uh, resulted in health. He devised a program called EAV, Electroacupuncture According to Vol. And it has involved in, in subsequent years to become computerized electrodermal screening. He was successful in finding the acupuncture points and demonstrating that these points had different resistance to tiny electrical stimulus than the adjacent tissues right next to it. So he could test where these energetic things were going, where these energetic paths were going on skin resistance uh, alone. Many other researchers have verified the exact same thing. And he began to study and search for the correlations between disease and the changes in the electrical resistance from the various acupuncture points. So when he would identify the points associated with certain diseases, he thought that he might be able to identify and treat those diseases earlier or uh, more easily uh, when intervention was going to be more likely to be effective. He produced a lot of information on the acupuncture points diagnostically because up until that time the acupuncture points were only used therapeutically for treatment. He was the first to take them and look at it diagnostically. He made several serendipitous discoveries that showed us that the acupuncture points change when the patient's going through an allergic reaction also. So this is something that the technology can allow for us too. It's in the testing of biocompatibility of materials using computerized electrodermal screening. So his original assumption that the electromagnetic energy is being admitted by certain substances and every substance on the planet emits energy, we covered E equals MC squared, everything has a signature like a fingerprint and the materials that we place in the body are either biocompatible or they're not. And there's certain gradients, of course, in, inside there. So the nervous system is electrical in nature and the presence of metals not just metals, but the presence of metals certainly can disrupt and distort the flow of the electrical signals. Now, the computerized ele electrodermal screening, is a, we now have a technical model, much like medicine, um, that can show us the electromagnetic energies throughout the body. So this computer model is very elegant. Now, I'll show you the math. All right, that's long enough we can look at that. Uh, <laughs> So it can trace every single meridian that we have, measure its resistance. And what we've been able to do here is take very high-tech, very expensive, state-of-the-art measures and technology of computerized electrodermal screening to prove the power of these low-tech, low-cost, and ancient acupunctural interventions and show how effective they can be. We're getting to that point right now. So if there's an interference, or blockage in the meridians, we know that there's an imbalance in the body and that can be seen uh, with computerized electrodermal screening. Now I don't want you to think of these, uh, these uh, uh, meridians as being geographical, like they're just printed on the body someplace. They go to every single endocrine system, they go to sensory glands, they go to the spine, they go to vertebrae, they go to tissue systems, they go to the vital organs. So as they course through the body, they can be detected through electrical resistance on the skin. Now, there are two places on the body where every meridian converges, where all of them come together. And the first place where every meridian converges is the reproductive organs and the genitals. Now, for procreation, that makes sense. That for, for, for the survival of our species, this makes sense. This is an awfully powerful thing to have your energies in that area. The only other place on the human body where all 12 energetic meridians converge is in a very small place in the lower third of the face called the mouth. 
So, we go through the entire body and the two places where all acupunctural meridians converge are the genitals and the mouth. Every meridian passes through the mouth. So it's not going to surprise you to say that every single meridian is associated with a tooth. Now, it's not to mean that we can take a tooth, fix it, and fix somebody's foot, but I think we've seen today that you can take quite a bit in the mouth and fix distant parts of, of the body. So, in this is extremely powerful. Now that we've got a third of the cranial nerves that go to the lower third of the face, we have all 12 acupunctural meridians concentrated and converging in the mouth. We've got kissing, language, speaking, breathing, tasting, eating. It says, there is no other profession that has the awesome responsibility of taking care of the most powerful place on the body that we do. So, I had a new thought when this came to me. And it was, I could really screw this up if I don't know what I'm doing. Is it, I've had oncologists tell me also, the oncologists that we work with, this is you just don't know how important you are as dentists in the fight for cancer. It's not all about teeth and gums to them either. So, I've gotten to this specific point. So what we do in the mouth as dentists is extremely important. Not so much in the way that people think, our patients think. But, you see, yeah, they, we do caries, we do occlusal problems, cover periodontal disease. We know in the last 15 years, since Steve Offenbacher out of UNC has got a, a links to cardiovascular events. We've got the cranial nerves that go down there and they're interested in what happens in the, in the lower third of the face. We've got every acupunctural meridian and now we are the only profession that puts foreign objects purposely in the body's energy fields. Now it doesn't have to be mercury, although mercury is the worst. It could be any material. It could be composite resins. It's probably not going to surprise you that there's good, good composite resins and bad composite resins. So when a root canal is unknowingly successful, un unsuccessful, and I think we saw the, 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 uh, the cone beam tomography this morning, I said, that's extremely powerful technology for us to have. So whether we can read it or not, or we're, we're accustomed to reading those particular radiographs. But it harbors that chronic and inflammatory burden on the patient, and the patient doesn't even know about it. That's where, if that particular, if that particular tooth, tooth number 14, had an inflammatory burden on the patient, and it was on the meridian that was tied to the left breast, he says, then there is some kind of interference with that energy that is not going to be available for fighting whatever's happening on breast cancer for the left breast. So you've got a blockage and interference because of in, uh, uh, incompatible metals and non-metals that we place in the body and infections. I've got a list as long as my arm of my patients that fixed tooth number 13 and his plantar fascia went away on his left foot. And we all have stories just like that. So it's about the biocompatibility of the placing in the human body. Uh, the technology for the computerized electrodermal screening is just amazing. Uh, it detects those signals, just like the fingerprint, and it produces the electrical signal, and then we can test our dental materials and compare it and integrate it with the energetic signals of the body through the meridians. Now, back in the 1950s, um, Back in the, this is 1953, back in the 1950s, Dr. Vall de developed uh, the chart between the bioenergetic relationships between the teeth and the rest of the body. Now, there are more charts that are much more specific than this, but this is the original one. It ties into which tooth is tied to glands, organs, joints. And if anybody wants a copy of this, just let, let me have your email. I'll, I'll shoot you out a copy of this. There, there are more... Uh, uh, developed charts than this, but this is a good thing to have at chair side when somebody says, hey, when you, when you did that bridge on the lower left, the stomach problems on the right side went away. Then you'll just have, they'll know that tooth number 2930 are tied to the right side of the stomach. So, 
We have the most powerful place on the body. We have energies that run through the body, culminate in the lower third of the face. We have a way to eavesdrop on the energies of the body. We have the ability to check for the biocompatibility of the materials that we're going to place in the body. And we've got the, off, uh, the professional burden of taking care of the patients morally. Uh, not just because uh, the manufacturer's representatives are trying to sell us something. So personally, I think we ought to be very successful in dentistry. I think that um, when we try to fit one size fits all and we look for the universals, we think that uh, all of our facilities are the same, all of our education are the same, all of our staff are the same, all of our manual abilities, our dexterity is the same, and it's profoundly mistaken at that point. So. I think we ought to have the best technologies available to us, but I also think that we should be doing something significant in the IAOMT, and I think it's a good thing that when you do this, you have a very honorable life, so when you're done with your career, you can look back on it and enjoy it a second time. So when you're in your rocking chair test, you, know, you say, I pulled a lot of teeth, I put a lot of implants in, I did a lot of crowns, and I'm not talking about... Um, Look at my big practice, look at my big house, look at my big car, look at my beautiful wife, look at all my shiny new stuff. This is, what have you accomplished? So, when you look at what you've done with your life, what you've done with your career, what you do with your time, I don't want you to be standing there at the end of that and say nothing, because one thing that frightens me is to be here for 80 or 90 years and to be practicing dentistry for 25 or 35 years of that time and to have wasted my time. So I want to look back on my career, making people happy and healthy, preserving their well-being, and I'm going to practice dentistry like I give a damn. And I wish the same thing for all of us, and uh, I think we can do this. Thank you.